This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Saturday, March the 30th, 2019. Today in 1867, by a treaty between the Russian Empire and the U.S. under President Andrew Johnson, the 586,000 square miles at the northwestern edge of North America officially became the Alaskan Territory of the United States. It was a controversial purchase. While most people were generally positive, some people took to calling it Seward's Folly or Seward's Icebox after the sitting Secretary of State. Many praised the move as a win for American commercial interests as it weakened both the Russian and the UK commercial operations in the Pacific. The total price was $7.2 million. With inflation, that could be as high as a billion in today's money. Modern political ideology regarding environmentalism and oil production make it difficult to research Alaska's impact on the U.S., though, so it's hard to be sure. Some argue the sparse population and the low tax base mean that Alaska still hasn't paid for itself. Others argue that even though there's oil, it's so expensive and dangerous to drill and to pipe that there isn't enough profit to make it worthwhile in the long run. Alaska is unquestionably a unique state in many ways and a remarkable place to visit. And so, be it wise or foolhardy, economically in the black or in the red, Alaska's ours and we love her. And she joined our United States as a territory today. Today in 1981, another landmark moment in American history American President Ronald Reagan and three associates were leaving a meeting at the Washington Hilton on Connecticut early in the afternoon. He was walking to the presidential limousine when a man named John Hinckley Jr. rushed forward with a Rome RG-14 22 caliber revolver and fired six rounds at the president. The first shot killed the White House press secretary, James Brady. The second hit a D.C. cop named Delahanty. The third shot was wide. The fourth hit Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy in the gut, but he survived. The fifth and sixth ricocheted off the limo. In the chaos, it was a Cleveland, Ohio union labor rep named Alfred Antonucci who tackled Hinckley to the ground. Amazingly, Reagan was not hurt, but for the rest of his life, he spoke passionately and often about the men who had risked themselves to save his life. When Hinckley was interrogated, he freely offered that he did it to impress actress Jodie Foster, who was 19 at the time and who had played a 12-year-old child prostitute in the 1976 film Taxi Driver five years earlier. Hinckley was diagnosed with a variant of erotomania and had been stalking Foster for several months prior to the assassination attempt. Reagan believed that God had spared his life for some reason, and so he met with various spiritual leaders, including Pope St. John Paul II, who had himself recently been shot. Finally today, in 1202 AD, Joachim of Fiore died in Pietrafiata, Italy. He's an odd bird. He was very learned, writer, philosopher, He developed some fascinating and popular theories about history and eschatology, which is the study of the end times. He founded a religious order, and Dante claims that his grave was a place of miracles and pilgrimages, and he appears in the heaven part of the Divine Comedy. But he was specifically condemned in the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas, and many of his followers and his readers in secular life and in religious life were a bit wackadoo. Of special note here are the so-called spiritual Franciscans. They they believe that the Antichrist was the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II. Throughout history, Joachim of Fiori has remained popular reading, and those who seem most devoted to his works tend to end up being declared heretics. Whether he's right or not, Joachim of Fiori is one of those figures in church history that just won't go away. And so he's remembered on this day that he died in 1202 A.D. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.